We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hi, and welcome to the Strong by Design podcast. I'm your host today, Coach Tanya Fines, joined by my colleague and friend, Coach Chris Wilson. Hey, Chris. Hi, Tanya. (laughs) These are always fun to do. We've done a lot more of these lately, which is nice. Well, we went a long time without doing too many in-house ones, which is... uh, was strange because we were here, yeah. But yet, I think we had such an abundance of um, guests. of these virtual yeah. guests, uh, and it's it's hard to say no when you have people that are reaching out to to yeah. us, or we're getting a hold of people that we've been trying to get a hold of, and so. Uh, but it's just as much fun, I think, for us to talk about. Yeah. all these different topics right. with each other. Um, yeah. and, and particularly like today, I'm really excited about this topic because it's one that I think in conversation and stories and talking with neighbors, it's, it's not, it's not some new under the carpet kind of like, we're not revealing some great secret, but we're going to be talking about something that people know about, but it has a greater impact on quality of life. than I think a lot of people realize until that moment comes when something happens and we all have a familiar story that we either personally involved in or have heard about it. And it's, usually isn't a great outcome. So we're talking today about balance and you become like our in-house balance expert where we've got all kinds of good things, a product um, that's going to make a huge difference in many people's lives, which we'll talk about later on in the program. But right now I want to start with, you know, like balance, what is it and why is it important? I mean, I think because when we're younger, we just take it for granted. Like if you watch your kids play, they're swinging and jumping and It's amazing. I would never even think to do those kinds of things now. I'm very cautious. Well, in in life, as we get good at things, we, not always, but we tend to take them for granted or not give them a lot of credit or thought anymore because they're just part of our, we don't think about getting up from our bed and walking safely to go to the bathroom or go to the kitchen and make coffee or, you know, go walk our dog. Yeah. But it took a long time to get there, theoretically. Right. right? When we were babies, we had to, we started to rock and roll and crawl. And it took a yeah. long time for us to be able to get up vertical and start Find our walking. Anchors. Right. Yeah. And even when we did. Yeah. How many times did we fall? Oh, yeah. As children, right? We right. fell like crazy. Mm-hmm. But we're little rubber balls. We're low to the ground. Yes. Our bodies are virtually... <laughs> the recovery and yes. bounce back is really fast. Right. We're designed for falling yes. when we're little, yeah. you know, and that's that's a, a special design, obviously. We don't come out of the womb in, in our adult 200-pound right. size, you know? Yeah. No, that would be good. <laughs> imagine if you couldn't walk well at this height and then you're falling all the time. Yeah. It, big, big difference big, in big the, difference. the result of that. So, you know, balance is, is vital and we, and we get our balance from all different parts of our body. We get balance through our vision. We get balance through our, our hearing, our ears. We get balance through touch. We get balance through, uh, just all kinds of, of, uh, parts of our system that once we, uh, once we have it down, then it's just, it's ingrained. It's, it's running in the background, just like a lot of our programming and our, and our our unbelievable brain can do so much in the background that we aren't even aware of and don't have to think about. And that's, that's balance. But as we get older in life, once we hit a certain stage of life, and that can be vary, obviously, there's some people can be in the best shape of their lives at 60, you know, <laughs> after yeah. maybe not being extremely fit or active early right. in life. But uh, for the most part, that last third of life, you can break your life up into thirds, a third, a third, a third, maybe you're one to th- zero to 30, 31 to, you know, 60 and 61 to beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, that final third is where balance really takes a uh, hold of our life in many, many different ways and becomes more vital to our existence, to our quality of life, to our, our freedom and independence as, as older adults. And, um, it's, it's those, those things, um, that 
always filled me up with passion for, for movement, especially mm-hmm. for our, our uh, older population, for our seniors and older adults. Right. And, uh, you know, me, much like you, we, we love our we love our old older family members. You yeah. know, we love our I have such fond memories of my grandparents, and my aunts and uncles and and people that were just unbelievable in my life growing up. And uh, I think of them, I think of them moving. I think of them mm-hmm. being active. I yeah. think of them doing playing things. with me and doing things yeah. and not sitting right. in a chair. Even uh, being and, out in the garden and stuff like yes. that. Just active, just involved, active. involved. Right. And that's what gave them great joy. Yeah. Not just being with us and seeing us as, as you know, the, the grandkids or, or you know, rel- distant relatives, but because we, there was a lot of motion. And, uh, you know, that motion in life and that movement creates emotion and right. typically in a very positive way. And when you start to move less um, as you age, mm-hmm. you know, not only do you, you know, lose your, your muscular yeah. uh, strength and stuff, you start to lose other things, too. Yeah. And balance would be one of those things. The, the less you move, the less you're testing your your right. body in real world uh uh, situations and the, the less you're stimulating that brain. And so there's a, a very clear connection, obviously, between your brain and your level of balance or how balanced you feel, how stable you feel. Um, and as I've said in, in past podcasts, your number one function of your brain is to move your body. That's the number one reason your brain is in your head is to drive movement and function of the body. Um, and whether it's internal movement or external movement, right? right? So your, your brain lights up when you move and when you're moving your fingers and your hands and your toes and your, and your hips. And you know, that, that's when everything, and once that starts to diminish as we get older, then we start to, you know, the brain starts to say, Ooh, I don't need to do that anymore then, I guess, you know, it starts to kind of shut you down. Yeah. So where did this, I mean, clearly it's, this is a topic you're very passionate about. You've spent a lot of time. I mean, you did, um, you actually, did you go away and do a, like a conference or workshop? Like you've, you've invested quite a bit of time in learning all about like really like to the nitty gritty details of like yeah. balance and how the body works and operates and the connection between the brain and the body and all of those things yes. specifically with respect to balance. So what was the driving force behind that? Honestly, it was, um, you know, when I was, uh, getting out of college and I ended, I landed a job with a world gym chain and was working kind of the desk and starting to get into personal training. I just love the gym. I love the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a kind of a, a job I slid right into out of college. It wasn't at all when I went to college for, which mm-hmm. was communications. Right. Um, but, you know, here we are on a podcast. Right. So I'm communicating. <laughs> you are communicating. It paid off. It did. Um, but um, so in, in, in having that job for several years, I was exposed to a lot of different uh, really high level uh, trainers and strength coaches and stuff. And I gravitated to those people. I was learning a lot from them. One of the guys, uh, Ben Prentice, um, became my boss. I start, I went off and worked with him in a private uh, training facility in uh, Southwest Connecticut and um, very affluent area. And it was all one-on-one training and this is like late 90s early 2000s when that was really kind of in the almost yes people were like this will never last right people would walk in be like oh what's the membership oh well it's like just a one-on-one you know private training center it's not for just the public to come in and work out oh this will never work Hmm. sure enough there's how many thousands of (laughs) places like that today you know but I was exposed to a lot of tremendous people, clients, Mm -hmm. and a lot of great learning. And one of my first uh, people that I came in contact with um, had was starting to show signs of, uh, you know, poor balance or, Mm -hmm. you know, neuropathy, drop uh, foot drop type stuff, behavior. And he ended up uh, with paralysis. I continued to work with this guy after he was. Uh, able to come back to us. Mm -hmm. So post stroke where he lost function of the one side of his body and I was still working. And, and that's where I just found great, um, 
uh, satisfaction, if you will, in serving this certain demographic, these people that these are these are great men and women who have lived long lives and they yeah. deserve the best at this right. point, not not scraps. They And so I tried to always, you know, I'm a talker, obviously. Right. I'm always ta- talking. I was trying to use my personality and my energy to, to boost them. But then also I could put them through training, mm-hmm. which was for me, it was like a win win. I, I was able to you know, communicate and have fun and get to know these people. They got to know me and then we always form these really great bonds and friendships. And I was also helping them get stronger and mm-hmm. feel better and get healthier and move and function better in their lives. Right. And, and that was kind of the, that my first taste of that, mm-hmm. um, at body tuning up in, in Connecticut, which has become a uh, apprentice hockey and performance, uh, which is a, an elite, uh, Ben Prentice is a, like an icon in, right. in the world of, of training high level athletes. And mm-hmm. I, I was one of his first pupils, if you will, right. learning under him and, and all the, the, the great uh, teaching that was going on in the early days of body tuning. So yeah. uh, I got a lot from that. And then I just carried that with me for the rest of my training years. Okay. Um, so it's kind of always been as far as your experience and your past and the way you've, you know, from then till now, like, balance has always been a part of what you do, what you've taught. So it was always there before it became, um, because it seems like now lately, especially in the last decade that all of a sudden balance is really getting a lot of attention. Right. But before that, maybe, maybe it it may have, it may be something to do with like my age where I was at that maybe just didn't resonate or something, but it just seems like all of a sudden the last decade, it's become a huge element in training, um, in health and wellness, in products. Yes. Like, you know, it's a yes. big thi- it's a big thing. Well, we're getting more and more people getting older, right? Right. It, right. As our population grows in this country and all over the world, we're getting more and more people, you know, ending up in their 60s and 70s. Right. Who want to still move and enjoy life. Right. And so this has become very, very important to them. Um, and... You know, so yes, it's, it's, I think it's definitely gotten more recognition. Uh, it was on a smaller scale, you know, right. if you go back 20, 25 years, that stuff existed, but it was just not out there as much, not as exposed. But, um, I, you know, when I moved from Connecticut to Florida, I, I was still, you know, working with clients, taking clients on, I, I had multiple jobs in the, in the fitness industry, Um, I ended up being a general manager of a, of a fitness and tennis center Mm -hmm. in Punta Gorda. And I was working that's where I really got to do even more of this work. Right. Really with that over 50 population. I was going to say that with the demographic there would definitely be. Oh my gosh. It's like a retirement area. Right. And so I was exposed to a lot of people, uh, a couple men. And so my first exposure really to, to a man with paralysis and some issues, his name is Dick, and he was fantastic. Yeah. That's where I got my nickname Scotty from. I, oh, okay. I became known as Scotty at, my, at, that, <laughs> at that business because he just remembered my name as Scotty and we okay. never corrected him. We didn't right. have the heart to tell him, well, no, you're wrong. His name's Chris. So it just became one of those yeah. funny endearments. <laughs> And yeah. until still to this day, if I talk to anybody that I used to work with, they still call me Scotty. That's so funny. Yeah, because for three years I was Scotty. Scotty. And um, and then uh, you know when I was working at the Punta Gorda Club, I have countless people that I would come into contact with that uh, you know either worked with or or could help on some level. Mm-hmm. But some clients, uh, I work with a gentleman by the name of Paul. And, uh, but, but actually all three of these gentlemen are deceased. Uh, you know, these are older, Mm -hmm. these were older men. These are men in their seventies and beyond. And, um, you know, so it's, but these are people that are in my heart. I'll never forget these, these people. Paul was, he had, um, he had severe peripheral neuropathy where both of his lower legs, he had very little neuropathy. Really, it's just it's a loss of sensation. Your nerve function in the in your limbs uh, becomes obstructed, um, and you lose feeling. You lose sensation. So when you're standing on your own two legs, it's almost like you also need to touch things with your hands to know 
if you're stable. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, use other things because that the feeling is not there like it used to be. Right. It's getting mm -hmm. squeezed right out. And so he had se severe uh, peripheral neuropathy and he wore leg braces, specially designed leg braces mm -hmm. that would hold his feet. Okay. From, you know, from the foot drop right. and, and other things, because, you know, foot drop is very dangerous. Foot drop just yeah. means your toe drags when you walk because right. you don't have the feeling and function in your lower leg. And so what are you going to do if you don't have a foot brace on? Yeah. Every time you take a step and your toe drags, you're going to catch it on something and trip yeah. and fall. Right. Very dangerous. And so Paul and I worked together several times a week. He became my buddy. We used to, he used to take me for lunch. I don't know how many times we went uh -uh. all around town. He, he would say, hey, could you have time for lunch today? I'd like to take you to lunch. I became kind of like a little, I would go over the house. I would help, help mm -hmm. him and Flo, his wife, do things around the house just because we enjoyed each other. Yeah. I think he, he felt safe with me. He right. knew I loved him. He knew I was looking out for him. And we just had a great friendship and a yeah. bond. Yeah. Uh, same thing with this, another gentleman, Mike. Um, he had, uh, some paralysis. Um, he actually moved around worse than Paul, who was at least 10 years, his senior uh -huh. because of his case and his issues. I would do very special exercises and training with these gentlemen, whether it was on their back or seated or standing or holding on to something really just off by ourselves. We would go and pick corners of the gym mm -hmm. and just do stuff, mostly body weight, but some band stuff. Um, you know, it's just some, and it was all focused on balance. Uh, and people used to look at people would see me trying to be like, Oh yeah, Chris, he's like kind of like the balance guy, you know, and this is, and this, <laughs> this is, is going, before, so you were a trend before it was a trend. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I've always kind of gravitated to it. And I even, even with my younger fit, very fit yeah. clients in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. I always had elements of balance standing on one leg. Our team would like to thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. And if you're enjoying today's show, please share this episode with at least one friend or family member who will benefit from this message. And please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Go to strongbydesignpodcast.com. That's strongbydesignpodcast.com. Let's get back to the show. It's important to mention or stress that balance issues, yes, definitely the numbers and the stats, which I want you to get into a little bit too, but it definitely it's taken from that 50, 55, 60 plus. So it's taken from that aging population. Right. But... It's kind of like anything, the, the things that we're doing now, like in our 20s and 30s, are such a huge investment in how that plays out for us yes, as we get older. Right. So it's not that balance. I don't believe that balance is necessarily an older person's problem. I think it just becomes evident because of lack of paying attention and including, you know, we're all, you know, we want to be strong. We want to be lean. We want to be buff and all those things. But there's a lot of other elements we can add to our, whether it's just daily activity or training sessions mm -hmm. that is going to support really good balance as we age. So we don't become that statistic. That's right. It's a much slower drop off <laughs> right. rather than a dramatic, right. you right. know, it's a, just a very slow decline. Which is expected. You know, if, one, if you're right. 90, you're not going to move as well as you exactly. did when you were 60. <laughs> exactly. Most cases, yeah. there are exceptions to the rule. But, um, yeah, we're speaking, in, obviously, in, in most, most case scenarios right. here. Um, yeah, the hard facts about balance uh, and how vital it is in your life and about falling and fall prevention. Mm. Like, th this is a very serious topic. Um, and so anyone listening that's you know, above 50 or 60 or has a family member uh, that maybe lives on their own and they're in their 60s, 70s or beyond. Um, this is definitely a conversation worth having with them or just n kind of uh, explore an awareness. an awareness, exploring a conversation yeah. like this because it can hold people back that you might not even be aware of That's uh, right. how fearful they are. Right. But th these are some of the stats. One in four Americans age 65 or older falls each year. Okay? And I think if for anybody listening, I don't think there's anyone that hasn't at least heard, you know, that common story, someone who's fallen, broken a hip, and it usually doesn't play out great. No, it doesn't play you out know? well so at this all. So this is like that, that, 
I mean, it, when I read that, it didn't shock me. But when I read that, it just made it that much more like this is a problem. Like yes. this is something that there's things that can help prevent that or reduce that risk. Yep. I think of my wife's grandmother, who's like her, the love of her life, mm-hmm. you know, and her, his, yeah. her closest family member. And once uh, Grandma Hall fell, she broke her uh, shoulder, fractured her shoulder. Mm-hmm. Her life was never the same. Yeah. And within three years yeah. of that fall, it might have been, it might have been even more like five, mm-hmm. but it, those last years Equality. were not yeah. what they were prior. Yeah. There was a change. Yeah. There was a change. And that, that's, that's what, why we're talking about this is because we, we're trying to help people avoid those moments. Right. Um, every 11 seconds, an older adult is treated in the emergency room for a fall. And every 19 minutes, an older adult dies Gosh. from a fall. So, I mean, that's a staggering, that's, that's, uh, three that's, people, reality. that's three people a minute. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or uh, sorry, three people an hour yeah. uh, that die base, you know, because of a nasty spill. And I'm not talking, you know, I'm, they're not falling onto a, a, a you know, a bed. Yes. I'm talking about people that are falling on stairs, people yes. that are falling on hard surfaces, yeah. uh, hitting their heads, yeah. breaking, uh, breaking necks, breaking, okay. yeah, breaking yeah. necks, breaking hips, fracturing bones and stuff. Uh, this is this is serious stuff. And as we said in the beginning, when you fall when you're younger, you get a bump or a bruise. Yeah. You fall when you're older, you can get a fracture or yes. severe injury. Right. We have that. You know, there's a muscle atrophy, bone density loss. Yes. So, you know, there's a lot of other elements that kind of support the probability that if yes. you fall, it's going to be much more serious. Much more serious. No doubt. Uh, falls are the leading cause of fatal injury and the most common cause of non-fatal trauma related hospital admissions mm. among older adults. Yeah. Falls result in more than 2.8 million injuries treated in emergency uh, emergency departments annually, including over 800,000 hospitalizations and more than 27,000 deaths. Wow! And I wrote slower reaction times. It, it's it's yeah. not always that you catch your foot on something, or tr- you know, when you're younger, mm. you you prevent that fall. You you put the you. Put stomp that foot out in front of you, or you catch yourself on the wall, or right. yes. you hold yourself yeah, up. Kind of, yeah. When you're older, you that reaction time's it's not, not the what same. it was. So you might want to do that, yeah. But your response in physically is not the same, and you go down. Yes. And so it's it's just one of those things. It, yeah. It's scary, and and to think that you know, a lot of people seventy plus, they either live together like a husband and wife mm-hmm. live together or one of them is deceased and you're yeah. living on your own yeah okay you're not like living with your family now some people you know they have their in-laws they have their grandpa you know like mommy and mm-hmm. grandma and grandpa live with them or something in a and that yeah. you know for some people that works out fantastic yeah a lot of people don't have that luxury so and and frankly a lot of you know i know for for a fact like uh People that we work with, mm-hmm. their parents love the independence. Yes. They don't want to be constantly surrounded by right. th- this, that, and the other person right. in their house. Because they, they're adults. They don't want to feel like children again. Like right. have, you know, right. and I, I understand that. Right. It's, they, they, they've achieved it's a certain level yes. in their life. They want to be yes. able to... Yes. They can do this. Con- they've always done this. That's right. <laughs> I want to control my dominion now. Yeah. I've, I've earned that at 80 yes. years old, you know? Yeah. So, you know, as, as people age... Also, certain ailments and disease yes. play into this too that kind of can help facilitate falling. Right. Medications and the, like the yes. treatments and stuff. Yes. You know, all of that. Yeah. Things make people groggy. Yeah. Things- and just eyesight. Like, I mean, I notice myself, you know, I'm not old by any means, but I notice like um, myself in the gym rather than just like stepping up to the bar and getting under, I, I really double check and make sure I'm, you know, my feet are well placed. Like I take a little more time and a lot of it has, I don't train usually with my glasses on, but without them, it's like that. My depth perception is a little off. Yes. So, you know, that just puts me, it doesn't mean I'm going to, but it does increase my risk if I'm not aware, not paying attention. That's right. I mean, uh- Anyone listening right now, even if you're in the best shape of your life mm-hmm. and you're in your 20s or 30s, if you go stand in the center of a room, you know, not near anything, 
and pick one leg up off the ground, hold it high, hold, bring your knee up yep. so you're standing like a flamingo, mm-hmm. that, probably not that hard to do. Right. Now close your eyes. Now close your <laughs> eyes and do the same thing. Yeah. Feel the difference. All you did was take away your vision. Right. Okay. There's people that are living that way or just close one eye even. You, yeah. you can play around with it. But just a simple balance test like that mm-hmm. quickly shows you, wow, I'm yeah. really reliant on my vision just to stand up on one leg. That's right. Um, and so now take, you know, now you have poor vision. Now your hearing's not what it once was, right? Yeah. All now, those other cues that help. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then add in this neuropathy or right. add in sarcopenia or medication or, right. or you know, a, like a lack of sleep. Some right. people getting older don't sleep as well. Like they tend to not sleep as long. Sometimes sleep is more interrupted. They're getting up to use the bathroom or they just yes. don't sleep. Little noises wake them up. So the rest that the body's getting at night isn't always as optimal as it was, mm-hmm. you know? No so all of these little things add up, but does that mean that we're hooped? That, that we're, that we're hooped? <laughs> that we're hooped. Hooped. Yeah. I haven't heard that <laughs> well, one. That's a know. Canadian term that or maybe a... it's or an eighties term maybe. So let's, term? let's define hooped just, like so just for our audience. Does that like list like, you know, we've, we've talked about the stats and, and, you know, as we get the, the very real thing of like what happens as we get older, like, you know, our eyesight tends to become compromised. Um, confidence in, in just how we move also becomes challenged. Sometimes we get sick, we need treatment, we need medication, all of these things are small factors that add up to making, having a big impact on our balance. So does that mean that, well, we might as well just give it up. There's nothing we can do. There's no hope. There's no help. Nothing that we do in our forties, fifties is going to help with our balance. Is that true? No. Okay. Of course See, not. Good. Right. Yay. Of course not. Well, I uh, knew the answer, but I just right. wanted to make, I just kind of want to bait the audience. Here right. Cause we no, got some course. really good news for them. It's, it's, it's crazy, but it, it does become kind of a fear, a fear that, Again, a lot of old, of our older population probably doesn't voice very much. Yeah. They're probably not going around having conversations with their family members talking yeah. about, you know, I, I really don't yeah, getting like in moving and out of the around tub my house. Is, is some, uh, it's right, hard right. now. But yeah. I think they're they're thinking about it. And, and people have become a little bit more in tune with this over the, over the years. I mean, mm-hmm. you see the safety bathtubs. Yes. You see yeah. that all the hand, the different suction cup handrails and yeah. things you can put in the bathrooms now, yeah. right? Um, you, I mean, people are are going. Obviously, people are using all kinds of different forms of yep. walkers and things just to be able to hold on to something while they move. Mm-hmm. The trouble is, they become too dependent on these things, right? And then it's really hard to back off. Yeah. It's one thing to use it maybe while you're dealing with a sore knee or an aching hip, yeah. something that you're trying to recover from. But if it becomes the 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 a hundred the new the, limb, the, almost. right, right, your your <laughs> yeah. your full time mode of transportation is holding on to this thing. And I'm not if you're 87 years old and you need this thing just to get from A to B. That's one that's thing. That's what you do. But I, you know, you, you end up seeing people and you. Then you see people in the grocery stores who are on the motorized carts and things like that, which, again, some of them 100% valid. Mm-hmm. Some some of them probably not so much. They're just it's there, so I'll I'll go ahead and take advantage of that. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. Right. I'm not and, I'm not yeah. gonna fall at the grocery store if I'm driving in a car. Right. 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 And I was gonna I was gonna ask you about that because in my head when I think about it, it's it's almost a little bit like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm. You know, because as people as we get older, there and again it's this isn't a hundred percent, but there's probably a higher percentage of people that their activity level declines to a degree. So become more sedentary. So with that, you get the muscle atrophy. And Mm -hmm. of course, that's going to affect balance. If you're not moving much um, with that inactivity, it's going to have like a ripple effect in the body. So that happens. But then there's this sort of whole confidence feeling safe thing. So is it... Uh, I'm getting older. My eyesight isn't as good. You know, I hurt my my ankle six months ago and I noticed I haven't walked really the same. So the confidence drops, which can play into becoming more sedentary or becoming more sedentary. And then all of a sudden when you do those moments when you have to go do something, you realize, whoa, I'm not steady on my feet. So I don't know that one trumps the other, but they're definitely both 
um, factors oh, in how this may play out. Oh, without question. You know, m- move less, get worse at moving, right. have anxiety about moving. Yeah, and then just don't move. And, it be- <laughs> and, and then just, right. Yeah. And then you, you become your own worst enemy because you're telling yourself, you know, mentally, like, I, I don't feel good getting up and going from my bed to the right. bathroom. Right. So, or I don't get, feel safe in the shower anymore. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bathe less. Yeah. Okay. So now hygiene becomes a thing, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I, you know, my bedroom's upstairs, but the kitchen's downstairs. So maybe all of a sudden nutrition becomes a thing. I'm not eating as good as I I could be because I got to go up and down a flight of stairs. And and this is why people have to really, yes, it snowballs and it, it can take you off guard. I think as you know, being maybe in, in, in a middle-aged adult, you got to really think about what, right. what are my parents, what's their quality of life right now with the home that they're in? You know, we're in Florida. We have a lot of one yes. single level yeah. homes here, right? So you don't have stairs to worry yeah. about. But I know in lots of the country, that's not the case. Most people have flights of stairs. They have right. to navigate. Stairs can be extremely and especially the older the house, yes. like the greatest stairs, like my, Steeper, some of those houses narrower. in yeah. the 70s and 80s are like, dang, you know, those things are steep, I know <laughs> you know. Despite what you might have been led to believe, the real cause of trips and falls has nothing to do with getting older or slowing down. Instead, it all comes down to one thing, a sleeping nerve in your foot. That's responsible for over 97% of trips and falls in those over 60. Visit neurobalancetherapy.org slash main for a powerful 10-second fall prevention ritual that instantly makes your body fall proof within minutes. That's neurobalancetherapy.org slash main. You developed, you designed this program that if any, like it definitely is going to have massive impact on balance, improving balance, supporting balance, maintaining good balance. But I also, what I liked about your program, because I had the opportunity to spend some one-on-one time with a couple working with them and just the, the, like the, the ease of doing this, like how easy it is to do it, how simple, like very, very incredibly effective, simple movements and exercises, but designed in such a way that, um, there is a safety element. Like you feel safe. I can do these. I can do these sitting. I can do these standing. I can do these with my hand on the, the, the kitchen counter. Like you've designed it that it takes that element of fear. So I think what I most love about it, other than the fact that it's going to have huge impact and improving people's quality of life is that it also feeds into building up that confidence yes. because once those people become caught, once they're able to do these things and start to see and experience the results, that confidence is going to build and hopefully get people just moving a little bit more again. That's the, that's the huge thing in, in life. It, so much is the mental, Oh right? yeah. you know, you can be a pro athlete, but if you're mentally block if there's a mental yeah. block if you've already kind of yeah something. right if you're telling yourself gosh i just don't know if you're a tennis player and you're just having a bad day you can just start to tell yourself things that aren't aren't real and just you can lose the the, the match even though you're the better player be, on the mental side mm-hmm. and that goes for any anything any right. sport any level of competition uh, male female older yeah. or younger it's, it's not a physical thing anymore. It's a mind thing. Yeah. And so when you're older and you've, and you've convinced yourself that it's unsafe to do X, Y, Z, then you don't want to do X, Y, Z anymore. Yeah. Right. You stop. The confidence is there. It is not there. The fear is, has replaced yeah. it. And, and so I really wanted a program that would help people start to eliminate this. I don't know if you can ever fully eliminate it at, at, at a certain stage of life, but you can certainly manage it. Right. And it's working. You know, most of us in, in life, you you don't just completely get rid of a fear. Right. It's a work. It's a working thing. You got to work through it. You just work through it. You yeah. just, you realize that doing the, the thing becomes more important and valuable to you in your life right. than li- living in the fear only. Right. And so it's just taking the action, taking that step, uh, even if you don't really w- want to, but you know you should, that kind right. of thing. So 
I wanted that 55, 60 plus community, which is a huge segment of our population. Mm -hmm. And again, only getting bigger to be able to simply and safely do something that wasn't really even a workout. Exactly. And it, th- that's the, that's what I love. I mean, so many things about the program I love. And I was lucky I got to film film it with you. You're so I actually, it. I got to go through and do all of these. And I mean, during filming, I was like, I can't wait for this till we have this up and running because I want to, you know, share it with like my mom and I've got aunts, um, you know, elderly or, or aging family members that I'm like, they, this is, they need, yes. they need this because it's so easy to do it. Yep. It takes very little time. You don't need any special equipment or anything. And just the way it's laid out is so um, friendly. Yes. It's so friendly and it's so helpful. Because I even found myself like, you know, halfway through filming day, it's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I can all of a sudden, because I have nerve, some nerve damage. So balance for me Yes. I have flare ups where I have a hard time. There's filming days we have here that I, I can't really feel my right side. I have trouble with my hand and my foot. Yeah. But doing um, just part way through some of these exercises, I was like, dang, you know, I can. That's been a long time since I've been able to feel the whole of my right foot on the floor. Yeah. You know, yeah, so it's good. <laughs> the program we're talking about is called Neuro Balance Therapy. That's so right. So please tell us about it because it's, I'm probably, this is the one product I'm the most excited about since yes. I've been here. Yeah, it is exciting. And it's, it's really comes from a good place. It's, it's filled with a lot of love and a lot of passion and a lot of uh, years, like I, I mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, decades of working with, with people and, and finding what worked, what they, what they liked, right. what gave them uh, benefit and what um, allowed, what kept them coming back. You know, the whole thing with, with, with finding a routine is that it's something that you can easily fit into your life mm-hmm. and it just, it helps improve things in your life. And yeah. it's, it just becomes like uh, anything else that you would do in your day mm-hmm. that getting that up to it, make the coffee, important. right? Part of your routine. You get it's up, you make the coffee routine. and then you spend the 10 minutes doing these that's these it. movements that's and then by the time you're done the coffee's done now you have your coffee that's it it's that simple it's that simple it's so that simple what makes this a little different is it's based on 10 things that you do but eight of them are actually like if you want to say movements or kind of like loosely exercise yeah it's they're very simplistic balance exercises uh, and movements to just kind of stimulate everything from your feet to your to your shoulders um, but it begins with with a spike ball and right. it's because of that peroneal that deep per- you have a nerve in your lower leg called a deep peroneal nerve and it goes all the way down and ends at your big toe mm-hmm. at, at you know ends at the, at the top of that which we need for balance. Part the of big your toe you need is that. necessary you for need balance. It. You need it. Ha- isn't there, haven't there been cases where they've somebody's lost a big toe, so they take the thumb or something because you cannot walk yes, without your big that's toe? That's right. Your big yeah. toe is by far the yeah. most important. You know, yeah, it really is a very part, important part, appendage. Part of your your, yeah. your lower. So this body. nerve ending there makes sense. It does. It makes big sense. And when you have foot drop or you have neuropathy, you have these, this this nerve is. Uh, is kind of, is weak, is yeah. understimulated, is lost sensation, is lost function, all these things that we need. We need our nerves. Our nerves are what fire things and what sent, we send get messages all senses. to the brain. Yeah. Yeah. And when those things aren't properly stimulated or not often enough, that's what what's kind of the domino effect. So the spike ball that you roll under your foot barefoot, you roll it, you know, in certain ways, up and down, side to side, and you do it for just a just about a minute at a time yeah. on each foot. Starts to wake things. Wakes it's like it's up. like getting a, a, a foot, giving yourself a yeah. foot massage. Um, and uh, again, you're just seated in a chair, very safely to do that. And then there's a very simple exercise you do afterwards called short foot, which is really just a, a kind of like a, a, a flexing or contraction a contraction of the uh, uh, arch, under part yeah. arch of the foot. Uh, and then that's followed by eight eight more exercises that mm-hmm. uh, again are, are very easy to do. And can be done simply, like Tanya said, while you're waiting for your coffee to be made, or, or uh, you know, it, it, it's really, it's really uh, one of those flows of movements mm-hmm. that was 
put together for a purpose because we didn't want people to feel like, oh, I got I got to clear a half an hour out here right. to, I gotta to move fit my the table balance out of the way. routine yeah. in. No, yeah. this no. is... Do no. this and then, you know, go about your day. Go for a walk or, or do it. I mean, and honestly, number one thing you can do when you're outside and you in your neighborhood and you see an, an older couple mm-hmm. uh, walking together, or an older guy or an older woman by themselves, uh, when they're out there walking and moving, and everyone ha- has these people in their neighborhoods, yes. right? These yes. the f- f- familiar faces. But you see these people all the time. I have them in my mm-hmm. neighborhood. These people are, are happier people. Oh, I, I yeah. promise you these people have more purpose. They, this is what energizes them. This yeah. is what, when they get up in the morning, they're preparing for their walk because they know if I don't get my walk, yeah. my day will not be what it, what it could be, what it should be. And I'm, I'm not doing my body, you know, I'm doing my body a disservice. Right. Walking is our number one beyond this program. It's our number one way to to maintain and retain our balance yeah. without question, and and just quality of life. You're right. outside. You're breathing fresh air. You're getting yeah, you're sunshine. You're seeing people. You're saying hello. Yes. It's a it social feels thing. Good. Yes. It feels good mentally, and it feels yes. good physically. It really does. I got a neighbor of mine, Jerry, and his wife Jody. He's the walker. He does like six miles a day. Wow. He's tall and lean and very fit. Yeah. Old, older guy, he, he's probably on the verge of hitting 70 or right around 70. Uh, you wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. But um, this guy is a walker, man. Yeah. And he's more of a walker than his wife. They walk together sometimes. They walk with the dog. But he likes to go off and do this long yeah. walk by himself at a really good pace because he just makes him feel good. I, yep. I know it. And so it's the movement. It's the stimulation. And, mm-hmm. and th- does this guy have fear of falling? If he does, it's so minor, yeah. you know, cause he's, he's smushing it down, you know? Yeah. And so that's about the best thing that we can do. So, but we're stimulating and waking up this, this deep nerve in our lower leg, but in doing that and do like you said, when you went and worked with that older couple going over these mm-hmm. moves, um, uh, there was a confidence there. Like I can do this. Oh yeah. They were just like, this is so, you know, cause I, when I showed up, they were like, you know, what do we, do we need to move the table? I'm like, no, no. You know, um, she put the coffee on. They just, we just pulled a couple chairs out. I said, just in case you want to sit, but they had it, one of those big kitchen islands. I said, but you know, I always like to suggest just have something there that you can yes. put your head. If you start, cause when something's new and you've never done it before, yeah. just nice to have it. Well, they were, they, they just couldn't believe it. They were like, this is like, this is it. Like they loved it, but they were like, this is, yeah. By the time we were done, the coffee was done. That's right. And you know, <laughs> I want people, I want people to go through this and say, oh, that was easy. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And they keep, were excited. Keep, they're keep excited to do yeah. it again. Cause they're like, okay. Cause, um, of course then the questions come, well, when should I do it? How many times a day should I do it? And I'm like, well, what does your day look like? Because this isn't something you actually have to like, okay, every Wednesday from three to four, I'm doing this. I said, you know, when you get up in the morning, like, do you just do you jump up out of bed? Do you get, she said, no, we kind of, you know, we kind of get up and sit there. I said, okay, great. You know what? You've got the little spiky ball in the nightstand. When you get up and swing your feet over the edge yeah. of that, spend the first two minutes doing the rolls. Yes. And then do that. And then do the, uh, the short foot. Yeah. You there, can do that. Yeah. And, and what's good Three is minutes. you can do this, any of this stuff out of order if you wanted yeah. to. You can roll your ball, your, your foot on the spike ball yep. as often as you want throughout your day. Yes. All it's going to do is have extra benefit exactly to you. yeah so i'm like yeah the you know there you go three minutes you've you've just you kind of shut the alarm off you're sitting there in three minutes you've done the first two things and now you get up and you walk around you're probably going to feel even better so yes. you're feeding the floor yeah and then i can't remember which one of the movements it was it might have been like going on tiptoes or, or like up on the balls of the feet and she's yes. like i can do this when i'm doing the dishes i'm like Yes. Yeah, you can. I said, you can even stand there and roll the ball when you're doing the dishes. So they were just completely, were so like appreciative of the fact that, yes, it would take them maybe seven minutes to go from beginning to end, the time it takes for their coffee maker to make the coffee and be done with the whole the whole, the whole flow Yes. or like during the day, like doing things like the dishes or there's one show she likes to watch. She can, you know, she can bring in any one of these exercises or movements and do it while she's doing something else. Yes. And the whole time just stimulating that nerve, working on supporting better balance. That's right. And, and that's, 
that's what make it just puts a smile on my face because I know that's kind of the side effect of learning this stuff mm. is that people are going to have a real appreciation and will be drawn to doing these things when yeah. they're not just, you know, doing the program right. start to finish. They're going to end up just lifting a leg just to test themselves yeah. randomly here yeah. or, hey, I'll do this one right now. I can do this or I'm at the airport waiting for a for a flight. I can do this mm -hmm. one or something. You know, I mean, there's there's so many little ways to sneak some of these movements into your life that have that reinforcement right. and that added benefit. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. To help our show reach more listeners just like you, please let us know how we've changed your life by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Go to strongbydesignpodcast.com. That's strongbydesignpodcast.com. Let's get back to the show. Other thing that we haven't really talked much about that I just want to mention because it is important is being more barefoot. Yes, I wanted you know, to bring up the whole shoes because we're very yeah, much a shoe society, aren't we? <laughs> we're heavy duty shoe society, yeah. and and you know what? Having a nice, comfortable pair of sneakers is important. You know, yeah. Um, and I encourage people buy the best pair of sneakers you can. Don't buy the yeah. crappy, cheap Walmart twenty dollar pair. Really, don't. It they're they're not made well. They will fall apart. They're not supportive. They're not typically, you know, and I'm not saying you have to go spend $300 either. Right. I'm just saying go somewhere and buy a, a good brand shoe that's going to hold up and support you, you know, when you're going to the grocery store, when you're running errands, when you're out and about. But when you're home, I, I really urge people to do some stuff barefoot because the program we really encourage obviously are wanting people to, the first two moves you ha pretty much have to do barefoot you're going to yeah. get no, or a no thin, like a thin, or a thin I, sock. I, because like the yeah. first time it's when you feel it could be a little like oh yeah, if you're very is, ticklish you're sensitive tickly, yeah. but you know what once you've done it like twice because I again I noticed that the first time this couple took the ball they're like oh like she kind of was like it tickles but I said it does just you know you know just light light pressure then um and I said, well, you know, maybe if you have a thin sock, but I said, we really want your foot. Like we want as much, um, like, uh, touching, like yeah. the feeling, you, ha yeah. you know, but after like she, they did it, I had them do it a little extra cause I was there for the day with them. And like the third time they took the ball and rolled it under their feet there, it just, it just felt good. Yeah. It felt good. It, so, but it, you're, yeah. when you wear shoes, cause these people also wear shoes in their house, which a lot of older people do. I yes. understand that sometimes it's necessary. It could be an orthotic. However... Um, you know, just removing the shoes to do this is, well, you have to, because otherwise right. it's doesn't, but we all, you know, we're walking around with these shoes on. I was explaining to this couple, like you've got your foot and you've got that nerve that runs through the bottom of your foot. That's so paramount in your balance. And then you put a shoe on. So now you've got this barrier between your foot and the ground. So the number of times that our foot is actually hitting the ground is so little that that nerve is not getting the stimulation. It's kind of like falling asleep. That's exactly you know? right. And that's why these communities and stuff that are like barefoot over yeah. in Africa say, yeah. you know, these people are, are in bare feet their All whole the time, life. Yeah. They don't put anything on. How scared do you think these people are to move later mm. in life? They're not. Yeah. They're constantly stimulating their, 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 from the ground up, mm -hmm. right? They are grounded, their, their feet are, and, and you think like that buildup of callus and, and stuff on the bottom of your feet with like deadened sensation mm. and stuff. It doesn't, mm. um, your, your feet have a lot of nerve endings. Yeah. A lot of, uh, I mean, just about, I think, um, pound for pound or inch, uh, inch yep, per square inch, uh, per square inch <laughs> yeah. more than anywhere else in your body. Cause that's your, that's what's touching the earth. You know, that's what's, that's, that's what we're designed to be yeah. upright and walk on our own two, on our two feet. So our feet are designed especially with a lot of sensory material. Yeah. And so you don't want to always mask that or mm -hmm. cloak that, so to speak. That's why, you know, walking barefoot on the beach. Why is it? Why does everybody like that? Why does it feel so oh, good? It feels amazing. That's, I know for, I know, I know <laughs> for, for you, it's like your favorite thing in the whole world, but <laughs> yeah. it really is. It's a, it's a good thing because it's just feels like you're part of, of this world. Yeah. You know, you're grounded, your feet are in the sand, you're part of, of mm -hmm. nature, you know? And so the more you can 
do things safely. Yes. Whether it's in your home on a safe surface or at the beach, you know, on the on on that good firm sand mm. that's fun to walk on, or maybe if it's you know freshly cut grass and you just want to walk around, it feels good to walk on on grass. Maybe you know in Florida, make sure you don't have the fire ants. Right. You know, but uh, you know <laughs> yeah. anything you can do barefoot is great because it's even just for a few minutes mm-hmm. here and there because of that extra stimulation and that mind muscle that that foot to brain. Right. Uh, is speaking that these are neural pathways, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a, 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 think about it. I like to, I'm an analogy, you know, Mike and I are always making analogies here, right? If you have a super highway from your feet to your brain, right? Mm -hmm. You want that traffic moving well, don't you? You want northbound, southbound traffic firing and and you don't want any, any jam ups or traffic jams or anything else. And you certainly don't want to shut down the highway and have to use side roads and detours, right? You want the main stuff working. And that's, that's what I'm talking about here is that we're just talking about waking things up and keeping your your feet and your lower legs all the way up to uh, to the brain uh, really engaged with each other mm-hmm. and having that really f- strong bond and relationship yeah. and and this that's what this program's designed to do is just to 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 keep uh, keep your feet talking uh, having a good right. conversation with your brain right so where do they get it? Where, Where do go? we get it? Yeah, we have because we need to get this. We need Everybody to go. needs this, well, and it's it, great. Like not just I'm like I said, I'm I'm getting it for several family members. Yes, I mean I I work here. I have access to the spiky ball in the program, so I can do it. In, and actually, a couple of times, like sitting at my desk, yes. I'm rolling it under my foot. Yeah, I got to go know? put one in my office yeah, too. Actually, but I'm I'm give I'm gifting this to a lot of family members. So this yeah. is a this is a great gift for the people that you love. It, is it really a gr- is. It is a we great want gift. them around for a long time. We want them safe and we want them to yeah. when we're having our long weekends and our family barbecues and the kids are out there kicking the ball around. Mm. We want the grandparents and the aunts and uncles out oh there having gosh. a good good time. If you I know? could snap my fingers and bring back all those people in my yeah. life and give them more time. Yeah. That's you know, what we want. With, with so, here, I, I yeah. would, uh, that, that would be the ultimate because yeah. in, in life it is, it's a, it's our, it, it's our relationships and our family and our friends. That's the meat. That's the, our life. Mm-hmm. That's the meaning of life. Right. That, that's why we're here. We're here to connect. And, and, right. and so if we can add some years or some quality, quality. years, so it's this quality. is a life extension program is yes. what this is. So uh, anyone listening who's interested in neurobalance therapy, go to www.neurobalancetherapy.org. And, and we're going to put that in the show description. Yes, right? we will. Yeah. And they've already at this point heard a commercial about it. Okay, so, cool. <laughs> uh, neurobalancetherapy.org is where you can go and find more about this program, what inspired it, uh, the story. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And it really could not just help improve the quality of someone's life, it could help save someone's life. Right. And for anyone that's, you know, strong and fit and doing their thing for, you know, five to seven minutes a day to do these to just as part of your maintenance. Yeah. Do it. Yep. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? I know it. Why I, wouldn't you do it? I, I, I love it. I, I appreciate your your love of this uh, uh, like mine, you know, and, and, and we see the value in it. And, yes. th- and that's really what it comes down to is, is providing value to people. And, you know, uh, it's such a, a great service. So please share this episode, yes. you know, with somebody who, who, who needs this program. Right. And like we said, you know where to go get it. We've given you the link. It's in the show description. Um probably one of the best investments you can make in um, a long-term quality of life because we are, we all get older and we can't, we can't avoid that. That's going to happen, but how we get older and what our life looks like as we get older, we have a lot to say about that. And this is a very simple, easy, manageable investment in changing how that could look for you. Absolutely. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. This was fun. This This was, was I was really, I, this is such an important topic and I, you know, cause we all have people that 
in our lives that are, are getting older and we like having them around and we want them to be safe and we want to know when they go home that they're okay and safe in their, in their surroundings and their environment. That's and, right. You know, this, this can make a huge difference to somebody that is getting older and struggling a little bit with getting in another shower or, you know, even standing at the kitchen pre- prepping dinner and stuff. This is, this is a great program. Um, and a great way to say, I love you. I want you around for a while. So yeah, thank I, you for creating it. Thank you for coming on here to talk about it. Please, um, yeah, you know, share this episode with someone that you love or somebody that you know could really benefit from this information and from this program. And don't forget to give us a five-star review and leave your comments. We love hearing your comments. And uh, Coach Chris is really good to get in there and and talk with you. He's he's the master. You've already been getting feedback and, and yes. lots of questions about it. Oh, so you're been, full in right now. You're all been, in. <laughs> well, we've been getting so many great questions through our help desk. And I love yeah. it. It sounds like it's people reaching yes. out that uh, like clients that I worked with. And I know this is going to provide... Uh, uh, just a, a, a great uh, opportunity for them yeah. to get that confidence back. Absolutely. Yeah. It's wonderful. Well, thank you again, Coach Chris. I'm Coach Tanya. Can't wait to get on here again and have another great discussion about something, right? Me too. I loved <laughs> okay. it. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you. 